Let's move on to ABSA Bank preference shares, which are issued by ABSA Bank, and uh, that is obviously part of the Barclays Africa Group. They were listed in 2007 and initially priced to pay out? 75% of the prime interest rate. You'll see that varies. But at the end of the day, remember, people buy and sell these in the market in order to equalize them so that you get roughly a yield which is appropriate to the underlying quality of the issuer, the prevailing interest rate, and I suppose at some level the liquidity of the instrument in the market. Market cap here, or an aggregate value of units in issue rather, 3.96 billion rand. They offer an effective yield of 4%. Look, that's what our data source says, but I think that's probably wrong. Uh, the chances are, given that it's issued by ABSA, is that it's going to be offering you something around the 8% that you're going to get from... Uh, so it eliminates first my first question because I was going to ask why, <laughs> why it's so dramatically lower. We're saying that we're not 100% sure of our data source there. No, I think it's more or less on a par with Standard Bank. If you look at Standard Bank and ABSA, I mean, the credit risk, you could argue, is pretty similar. Mm. Um, Barclays, of course, is the big parent company for ABSA. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Uh, you know, you've seen international banks are not what they were previously. Um, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, so the credit risk is very similar. The, the percentage they pay out, interestingly, is slightly different. And then most probably mm. what will happen, as Paul says, the price changes to, to equalize that. So these are very similar instruments, the, the Standard Bank one uh, and the APSA one. And the, the amount in issue is also very similar. So maybe you would see liquidity being, being more or less the same. Let's have a look at the share chart because that will tell a similar story. And you can see the chart chart pattern is sort of the same you know so if you've been holding these you might be feeling a little depressed because you might have bought them at you know 900 and they're now trading at 797 so you feel like you're making a loss is that a sustainable trend well it depends on what happens with interest rates if we see a sharp increase in interest rates and we've already seen a 25 percent basis point then the price at which these reside in your account will go down because that's the inverse effect that we normally see with bond-like instruments, but not as much as would happen if it was an out-and-out -out bond. Your thoughts going forward? Uh, if I you are holding them, do you continue to hold them? You can keep holding them. Uh, obviously, you've bought them for a very specific reason, because you want a cash-like return, maybe some of the tax advantages, as I mentioned. You think you can get, get a better yield. They're not good for trading. They're good to, to hold and, 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 and really earn that yield on them because the, they're not that liquid and the double, the bid between the buy and sell price can be quite high. So getting in and out is very expensive. Um, so it wouldn't be good to trade them. So if you, if, you, if you like this asset class and you've bought it for a reason, let's probably stick to it. Paul, are we going to call? I would say not hot not for hot. me as a general view on this as well. Hot yes, or not? The sa same as previously.